I'm here with R.J. McCool. R.J., I mean, you brought an interesting subject to us. Um, so, in the past, when we've talked about lens calculation formulas, uh, they've been, uh, uh, you know, based on, on, on these squares, or they've been based on uh, a, a sort of vector uh, ray tracing. Uh, now we have a, a, a formula that I use frequently, which is the Hill RBF formula, which is an AI-based formula, machine learning formula, uh, that gives results that are really, really wonderful, especially for extreme eyes, uh, rivaled only by uh, the Barrett universal formula. Um, my only issue with the Hill formula is that for me, it means that I need to print out the parameters that are important for this formula, and then I have to go to the website, and I have to type things in, and there's always the risk that I'm going to transcribe something wrong. That's not a problem that you have. Tell me why. Because I have the new LensStar. Uh, so Hill RBF is incorporated into the new LensStar. You don't have to do anything except for point and click. Um, and I've found the formula to be extremely accurate, and it can only get better. Um, the more data the, the uh, formula gets, the more uh, the Hill RBF learns. Um, and through just a collection of data points, leaving out ELP entirely, we can get very accurate um, readings and, and the IOL um, that we need for patients across the board. So what I do currently, uh, and have been doing for some time, but now with the Hill RBF, I have an added weapon. I've been using the LensStar and getting the Barrett reading. And now I also get the Hill RBF. So you have two different formulas. Um, the Barrett is great, but the Hill will also tell you when a value is out of bounds, meaning um, the machine understands when statistical data don't match up properly, where they can say, without, they say well, everything in bounds is uh, above a 90% confidence interval as you get within a half a diopter. But if it's out of that confidence interval, it'll tell you. Um, this is not possible with any other formula. Um, so that's a very valuable thing to know. Now, I haven't had to do that in the past because what I've done is I've used the LensStar to get my values. And I've also used an older formula with auto, um, with auto Ks. You know, uh, the old Hoffer Q program, if anybody has it, is still very valuable um, because it's a second way of figuring out what your IOL power should be. So if you use two different modalities, um, you're always going to know if there's a huge difference that something's off. Um, so I recommend that as well, but um, it's great to have uh, this new feature in the LensStar, and it's only going to get better with time. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it also gives you um, error messages if something's statistically a little bit off. So if you do Ks and they, there's an, um, you, you do multiple measurements instantaneously, if those measurements vary by a quarter of a diopter or more, the machine will tell you you can exclude values that don't make sense. Um, if the axial length um, measurements vary by greater than 0.1, it'll tell you and you can exclude ones that don't make sense. Those difficult cases uh, where you have a mature cataract, it automatically goes into mature cataract mode. If the eye is too short, there's a short eye measurement feature. So um, the machine is actually fun to play with. And I've, I've found that it's saved me a lot of time, a lot less immersion. Um, no one wants to do immersion in their office if you let your staff do it. They, they can, but if you scratch a cornea or they scratch a cornea, it's not fun. So you sort of end up doing it yourself. This machine will take a lot of that out of your hands. Yeah, no, very, very nice. Uh, yeah, and you, you, are, you are absolutely right that, that, the, that the Hill formula, the regular base function formula, is the only one that, that, I, that I know of that will tell you when, when not to trust it. Having said that, the, the current iteration of the formula tells you that less and less often because it includes a, 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 a much larger range of uh, eyes. Yeah, no, really very, very nice and not having that risk of a, a transcription error, you know, that's a big thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. All you want to do is eliminate outliers. So if the machine can tell you, and by the way, just because it's out of side the confidence interval doesn't mean the reading's not correct because I look at, I compare the Hill and the Barrett all the time and they're almost always very close. There's, there's very little variance between the two. Um, and I think most of the variance when you do biometry is from the keratometric readings, to be honest with you. So 
Uh, that's why I do two different modalities as well, two different machines. You know, there are a lot of points when you look at the lens star, two symmetric rings when you shine that light on the eye. Those are all those points that, the, that are being measured on the, uh, the cornea. It's a lot of points, but still another method is always good so you can compare the two and say, all right, um, I know we're pretty much on track here. Um, another feature of the new LensStar, it prints out a little uh, toric IOL map, so it tells you the axis of your toric automatically. Um, it takes into account SIA. Um, you can actually, in real time, move your incision around and see what it does to the, uh, the axis of your toric and you know, how the SIA affects it. So um, you can have a little printout when you go to the OR that tells you exactly where to put your toric IOL, what power it should be. Um, these are fun little things to do. Really, really, really great stuff. And, and, and you know, I, uh, confession, one of the reasons that I went into this field is, is cause of the toys. And it's nice having uh, a dude that incidentally also helped the patients. I, I should say, number one, of course, is your results. Um, but if you can have fun getting great results, I don't know. I, I love the machine. I, I, I wouldn't use it unless it gave me the best possible results. But if you can have fun using it, it's, it's, it's worthwhile. Oh, yeah, so I want to thank you for bringing this 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 neat topic to us, this neat tool, uh, and most of all, RJ, I want to thank you for being so very generous with your time with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure.